Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Oh, uh, y'all can do better than that. Now, I didn't say praise Rodney. I said praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome and a mighty God. Yeah, yeah. It is truly worthy to be praised. Uh, we're going to start off with our, our scripture reading. It's coming from Matthew 22. And we'll go ahead and read from, uh, we'll start at verse 34. It says, But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the, the hearing, and those that obey his word. Amen. Amen. We'll go in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity to come before you, to come into your house of worship and in your presence one more time, oh God. We can't take it for granted, oh God, because there's some that didn't wake up this morning. Yes, Amen. But you saw fit that we would be able to not only wake up, but to, to wake up with our right mind, oh God. Yes. Yeah. To wake up with a mind that knows that you are our God, you are our Lord, you are our source, you are everything, oh yes, God. Lord. It is you whom we live, move, yes. and have our very yes. being in. Yes. Yes. And for that, we just want to say thank you, thank Lord. You, Lord. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah to your name, oh God. Yes. Lord, you're worthy. you're worthy. Oh, we just bless your name. Lord, we shall mock you. You are worthy of all our praise, oh God. Lord, we can't sit silent, oh God, because yeah. if, if we don't praise you, the rock will cry out in our place. Yeah. And you've been too good to us, oh God. Yeah. You've been too good to us. Yeah. Hallelujah. You brought us through a, a pandemic, oh God. You, you, you brought us through even, even times when we was lacking, oh God. Didn't know how our next meal was going to come or, or where the next rent paycheck was coming from, oh God. You have been too good for us, oh God, to sit down on our praise, oh God. And so we just ask that you just continue to, to receive our praise to you, oh God, because you are so worthy. We just thank you for all the blessings that you have given us. The ones we recognize and the ones we've yet to recognize, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you for keeping us from danger seen and up and unseen, oh God. We just thank you, oh God, that you just continue to, to guide our path, oh God. Lord, we ask you to forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. Hallelujah. Cut the cords of iniquity in our heart, oh God. Creating us a clean spirit, oh God, that we might follow after you with the right mind, oh God. Lord, we ask you that you just continue to lead and guide us. Lead and guide us away from the pitfalls and the traps the enemy has set for us. Lead and guide us into that wealthy place that you have set up for us. Wealthy place spiritually, physically, financially, and emotionally. Lord, we just ask you, just continue to have mercy upon us. Continue to have mercy upon our family. Lord, we, we, we expect to receive and hear from you on today, oh God. Our hearts and our ears are prepared to hear a word from on high, oh God. Yes. Hallelujah. We ask that you just would be with the man of God on today as he brings forth the bread of life, oh God. We ask the Heavenly Father that you would just continue to, to bring back to us in memory all that he has studied, dear Heavenly Father, concerning what you have told him, oh God. Yes, we ask that your Holy Spirit would just continue to permeate this place, oh God. Hallelujah. Set the atmosphere. Hallelujah. To receive signs, wonders, yes, and miracles. Yes, Hallelujah. We bless your name. Yes, and we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We now have a selection by our Lord Sister Tony. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. And we will rejoice and be glad yes. in it. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Mm. A day we've never seen before. Because 
Because the Lord is my shepherd, yes. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass and leads me beside the quiet streams. He restores my failing health and it helps me to do what I miss him the most. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe.
Come on. And other people, God, stop complaining. Be grateful for what you have. He didn't have to bless you with that much. Hallelujah. Come on. We need to be grateful. Some of us got big fine cars. We we complaining because we ain't got the color blue or something. Hallelujah. We got five dollars. We complaining because because the Lord didn't bless us with ten. Come on, y'all. Come on, we need to stop complaining and be grateful for what we got. Yeah. It's somebody who don't have what you have. It's somebody living up under a bridge. Well. Hallelujah. Somebody ain't got $2 to their name. Go ahead and look out right out here at this at this light. It's somebody standing there begging for your dollar. Yeah. Hallelujah. We need to be grateful yeah. and stop complaining about what we don't yeah. have. The, the, the scripture says, be content in whatsoever state we're in. Right, Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's just put our grateful hands together. We are going to have to this place that is truly, truly worthy to be praised. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus, we pause right now and just to pray with you as our Lord and Savior. We give you thanks. Father God, we stand in total awe of you. For you are a great God. And you are worthy to be praised. Bless right now, Father God, your servant. I pray, Lord, that Jerry might decrease, that Jesus might increase. Open up the hearts and your minds of your people that we might be able to hear what thus says the Lord. Use me, Father, as you see fit. Father, I'm asking that you just cultivate us, mm. that your word might fall on fresh ground. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, for you are my strength. You are my redeemer. Hide me, Lord, behind the cross, that all we can see is Jesus. And let the people say, Amen. Amen. We give glory and honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, brother of the gospel, and to all you God's children. I, I just feel good in my spirit this morning. I spoke to Mike the other day. I said, um, I said, Mike, I believe Junior has called my family and told them to come to church Sunday. <laughs> And Pop wasn't supposed to let it out of the bag. Because <laughs> Pop called me and said, Son, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it Sunday. Imagine that. Um, because I have to do this and I have to do that. So many. I said, Well, Pop, I wasn't looking for you to come to church this Sunday. Well, I just wanted to tell you that. So I said, Well, I guess you're supposed to be here. But, and I don't think he was supposed to call me and tell me that he was supposed to be here. But that's why he's pop. Amen. 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 So thank you, brother, for trying to surprise me this birthday Eve. <laughs> Amen. That um, we're able to still be here and celebrate birthdays is nothing but God's grace. Yeah. And I thank the Lord for that. Thank you for coming, my big brother. Amen. God bless you. There is a word from the Lord this morning. It's found recorded in 2 Kings in chapter number 5. And I'm going to, just for the sake of time, I'm not going to read the read it in this time. I just want to read... Um, Starting in verse number eight. So just eight, nine, and ten. You found it, please please stand for the reading of God's gospel. Second Kings five. You can go to the glossary if you want to know where Second Kings at. It's in there though. Trust me. Old Testament. Mm -hmm. 2 Kings 5 and 8 It reads When Elisha the man of God heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes He sent him this message Why have you turned your robe 
have the man come to me, and I will know, and he will know that a prophet lives in Israel. So Naaman went with his horse and chariots and stopped at the door of Elijah's house. Elijah sent the message to say to him, Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be clean. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of his Lord. Wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Albanian and far far the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Could not wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Amen. You can have your seats in the presence of the Lord. So just for about 17 minutes and 45 seconds. I want to tag this passage of scripture. Saved by the bell. Amen. Saved by the bell. The term saved by the bell is a boxing term that illuminates a person has been knocked down and almost knocked out. The referee has started his standing eight count because the, the person is, is inebriated. I mean, he's not functioning with all his faculties. And therefore, he's being counted out. Mm -hmm. But at the last minute, before the ref was able to get to the end of his count, the bell rings mm -hmm. and gives him a second chance and gives him the, the time to recuperate mm -hmm. from the beat down yeah. mm -hmm. he just took. Uh, when we begin to understand how God works in our lives, we'll understand that there's been times we have gotten a beat down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Life has, has hit us with some blows that has, that has knocked the wind out of ourselves and, 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 and we've experiencing some things with the Lord that we're laying Lord this 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 pressure that I'm under is is immense mm -hmm. well, and life is counting us out uh -huh. yeah. but then well, mm -hmm. you're saved by the bell uh -huh. walk with me mm -hmm. through this text mm -hmm. when I'm studying this passage of scripture God was able to show me some things that I had not seen before. That I had to do some digging uh, in order for me to get it. Uh, so once again, he kept me up to three in the morning uh, with, with no regard of me having to get up at seven. Uh, this passage teaches us that, that Naaman was not one of God's chosen people. Come on now. Come on. Now, I, I, I thought that he was obviously uh, on God's side. Mm -hmm. But Naaman was actually a commander of the army of the enemy. Mm -hmm. he, he had been defeating Israel mm -hmm. and had leprosy. Mm -hmm. And decided that this, 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 this leprosy was, was getting the best of him. The Bible said he was a valiant soldier. He won many battles. Mm -hmm. So much so that he was highly ranked in his king's army. Well, mm. He was a mighty soldier. Orchestrated beatdowns well, well. for Israel. <laughs> he had a young slave girl that he stole away from Israel. Uh -huh. Working for him in his palace. Because he's mighty Naaman. Mm -hmm. But he had leprosy. Mm -hmm. He had uh, uh, raided Israel's territories mm -hmm. and taken things that belonged to Israel. Mm -hmm. But he had leprosy. Well, mm -hmm. the, 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 the little girl said to him, there's a prophet in Israel. If you only went to him, you might be made whole. And he thought, I've tried everything else. Why not at least give this an opportunity? When he sent off the letter to his king, the king said, go on down there 
and get yourself healed. And he sent a letter to the king of Israel saying, I'm sending one of my soldiers down there so you can heal me. <laughs> Come on now, make it make sense. When the king gets the letter, he was like, what are you sending them to me for? <laughs> you, you, you're just trying to start something. There you go. You know good and well, I can't heal somebody of leprosy. Yeah. And the king was distraught. It's funny to me, because if I begin to try to really grasp what God does in this passage of scripture, we will find out that God is not a respecter of person. Come on now. Come on. He heals the just as well as the unjust. He blesses those who give as just as much as those who don't give. He just loves his people and is just in his character to be good unto his people. Mm -hmm. He doesn't look at Jews and Gentiles. He looks at his people. Come on. Come on. God wants us to understand that, that when you come unto him, you can come as you are. Yes, sir. Well, just don't leave the way you came. Come on. Mm -hmm. He brings this, 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 this person in and, and, and this Bible tells me that, that there's three ways God tells us here that, that God is unorthodox. He doesn't do it the way you think uh -huh. he's going to do it. Come on now. And it's funny because if you don't do it in his unorthodox manner, you don't receive the blessing that he has in store for you. He's, he's, my God is unconventional. Well. And sometimes you're going to have to learn to give God an unconditional yes, praise. Yes, Three things teaches me here that he does it in an unorthodox manner. First thing is Naaman had to listen to the slave girl yeah. for deliverance. Okay. And how many of us here think that a child can't say something to you that might lead you to Christ? On, it just don't work like that. God said, I can send a dog to you. I can make a donkey speak. I can do however I choose to get you to understand what I'm trying to do in your life. But if you don't listen, you won't get the blessing. Come on. You didn't want to hear it from them. That's what it was. Anybody can say something from God. Come on. If God gives the word to him. Well, but if you don't want to listen to him, you don't get the blessing. Well, yeah, yeah. Naaman was at his wit's end. Lord, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a listen to this little slave girl and take my butt to Israel for deliverance. Mm -hmm. It's just unconventional. You know what? Brother Peter, you can tell him and you can make it make sense to him. Well, you can show it to him. And it can look perfect. You can, they can say to you, that's a good idea. And leave and still don't do it. Oh, it sounded good. I thought about it. Oh, that's a good idea. I still won't do it. Oh, you can tell him, give and it should be given unto you. Press down good measure and you shall be blessed. They'll go out here and still won't do it. Mm -hmm. Makes good sense, but I didn't want to hear from him. Well. Mm -hmm. Then you go down the street, Jeffrey Johnson say the exact same thing. And now they shouting and kicking the tables over. Come on. Well. He said the exact same thing you said. But they didn't want to hear it from you. Uh -huh. And not just the preacher. Go tell your friend some yeah. good news. Come on. Go tell your friend that the wages of sin is death. Well. But the gift of life is through Jesus Christ. Girl, I ain't trying to hear all that. Uh -huh. But then they lay in the hospital and call you and ask, can you come pray for me? Yeah. He's unconditional. He, he's, he's, he, he's unconventional, man. So 
then, then he goes on his journey and he meets, goes to the man of God, knocks on his door, and he don't even come see him. <laughs> you mean to tell me I done walked and traveled all this way yeah. to come see you and you don't know who I am? Don't you know I'm naming? Yes. <laughs> and you got the audacity to not even come out and say hi to me? That's when we get the the arrogance Come on. of thinking I'm somebody mm -hmm. when really I ain't. Well, when did you become so high that, that, that God has to come and meet you how you want God come to meet you? Come on now. Come on. Come on. I want you to answer the prayer according to the way I want you to answer my prayer. Well. That ain't what I prayed for like that. He's unconventional. Oh, yeah. He can't even, he can't even come out and see me. Audacity of, of this man of God. My Bible tells me, man, he, he he may not come when you want him to, but he's always on time. He just want to do it in his time and in his way. Then you have the audacity to tell me to wash in some old dirty water. Well. All these good lakes with crystal water well. looking good. That, that's, that's just perfect setting. You would rather me go wash in some dirty water yeah. than to wash in this fresh, clean, nice stuff right over here. All right. I would argue Junior, that the Jordan was further away mm -hmm. than the other two. Mm -hmm. I would argue it was going to take you some distance to get to it. But I don't want to do all that. Come on. Lord, make it as easy for me as possible. Well. Lord, there's a water just right across the street. Mm -hmm. Let me go to the tablet. No, no, no. If you really want to be blessed, if you really want deliverance, you're going to have to participate yeah. in your breakthrough. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to stop thinking God's going to have to do it all. God said, you want to be healed? I can heal you. But you're going to have to participate in your healing. Yeah. You want to be financially blessed? I can financially bless you. But you're going to have to participate in your blessing. Come on. You want your eyesight back? Guess what? I'll give you your eyesight back. But you're going to have to participate in your healing. Yeah. Come on. We don't want to do all that. You just do it. Mm -hmm. Come on. You want me to travel to the Jordan? Yes, sir. Are you serious? I just came all this way. And now you ask me to keep on going and do some more journeying? Yes, sir. Yeah. Exactly what God is asking us to do. If you're going through something, what won't you do to get healed? Man, this, this thing is bothering me. What won't you do to get it? Whatever it takes, Lord. Whatever it takes. But Naaman. Decides that I ain't doing all that. <laughs> Come on. I ain't, I ain't doing all that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody, God said, I got mm -hmm. something for you. Yeah, yeah. I, I can do this that you're asking me. Uh -huh. And I'm asking you to participate in your blessing. Mm -hmm. You got your lip poked out and say, Lord, that's too much. Hey. So you keep on sitting there waiting on something else to happen when God said, I've already put things in motion for you to get what you want. But unless you don't get up off of your butt and start participating in it, you ain't going to get it. Keep on sitting there and then keep on waiting for you. Once you get up, you can go get it. But if you keep on sitting there, it's going to keep on waiting for you. He said, nah. I ain't doing all that. It went off 
mad. The nerve of the man of God tell me go wash in the door. He, he can't even bring his tail out the back room and talk to me. No, I ain't doing it. Goes on back to that kind, sweet voice comes back to him. Don't you like Jesus? He always gives us another chance. That's just what he is. He always gives us another chance in a, in a small, sweet voice. If the man of God said, Watch the Jordan, why won't you just take him at his word? He said, What? Well, Maybe, maybe I should go dip in the Jordan seven times. Unconventional. Why seven times? Mm. Ain't one time enough? Can, can he do it just with one time? Mm -hmm. Sure he can. But can't you dip yourself seven times? Come on. Is it all right if I ask you to do it seven times? Uh, there's a reason why our Lord said seven times. Because that's my number of completion. See, if you only do it six times, yeah. you ain't going to get healed. Yeah. But lo and behold, when you do it one more time, yeah. Yeah. Bible said he came out with skin white like a baby. Yeah. He had fresh skin. But uh -huh. leprosy uh, had left him. Uh, God tells us here, that sometimes you're going to have to listen for God in a way that you ain't looking for God. Uh, you need to have an attentive spirit uh, to listen for God when God speaks in an unconventional manner. And let God speak to you however God chooses to speak to you. Let God use whoever God chooses to use. God tells us for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways are mine. They are so far across. You can't even think what I'm thinking. You can't comprehend my thoughts because my thoughts are just not your thoughts. So stop thinking God's going to come in here on the left side because he just might come in on the right. Stop thinking God's going to come in here shouting because he just might come in here and whisper to you. God said you're going to have to listen for me in an unconventional way because I speak unconventional. Uh -huh. yes, he gives it to him. Uh, Naaman uh, receives his blessing. Uh, the Bible said that when Naaman got up, he went back on the other side of the Jordan and told his people, there's a God over there. Uh, there's a God man over there that is moving and this God is speaking on his behalf. And I just want to let somebody know that God tells us if you never got sick, you would have never known that I I'm healed you. If you was never hungry, you would have never known that I was a keeper. Had you never lost your mind, you'd never known that I would be a friend closer than a brother. Had you never been down and out, you would have never met me at the, at the place that you needed me. I needed you to have that situation to happen to you because I needed you to learn who I was. I needed to take you over rough roads because I needed you to know I was a bridge over troubled waters. I needed them to get sick because I needed you to know that I'm a healer. I needed them down on their last dime because I needed them to know that I can provide for them. I needed that situation they was going through because they needed to know who I am. Come on now. That's why you went through it. That's why you came out of it. Because I needed you to know who exactly I am. Yeah. Man, I understand it, Lord. Uh, because of God's great love, uh, we are not consumed. Yes. Uh, for his compassions uh, never fail. Yeah. And great is God's faithfulness. Yeah. Uh, that's why I had to go through it. Great is his faithfulness. Yes. That's why I had to endure it. For great is his faithfulness. It didn't take me out. Great is his faithfulness. See, the life hit me with a low blow, but the bell was not rung yet. Life started counting me out. 
but it just wasn't time yet. Yeah. I've seen them counting one, two, three, and four, but then I was weary and my legs were shaking, but I just wasn't out yet. Great is his faithfulness. And the bell rang, God said, get up and stand for a little bit longer. Hang on in there a little bit longer. The race isn't given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but he that endureth to the end. Keep on fighting and keep on listening for me in an unconventional way. He got clean mm -hmm. from his leprosy. Yes, he did. Uh, leprosy then uh, was just a form of sin for us. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm dirty. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm diseased. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm stricken. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have to make my way to Jesus. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, Lord, I'm coming to you all infested. Yeah. Lord, this thing is killing me on the inside. Yeah. Lord, and I just can't seem to make ends meet with it, Lord. Lord, I'm needing somehow for you to touch me and make me whole again. Lord says, come, uh, let us settle this matter, says the Lord. Though your sins uh, be as scarlet, uh, they shall be white as snow. And though they be red as crimson, I'm going to make them white yeah. as wool. I'm, I'm going to clean you up and, and turn you around. I'm going to place your feet on solid ground. I'm going to make you whole from all your iniquity yeah. because the bell ain't quite rang yet. Uh, this fight ain't quite over yet uh, because the refs started counting, but they have not rung the bell uh, because the bell won't be ringing until he breaks through the clouds. The bell won't be done until he comes to rescue his children. It won't be over until the chief official comes to see about his people. And I'm glad uh, this Sunday morning uh, that God has a way of getting us through our situations. I'm so glad that God will come see about me when I begin to struggle. I'm glad that when I'm in my wits end, God, I have somebody speak a word to my situation. Somebody tell you just hang on in there just a little while longer. For God will come see about you sooner or later. You're going to have to keep on fighting in your situation. But if God tells you that you're going to have to do something unconventional to get what you're trying to get, guess what? Let's do something unconventional. Yeah. If God said take your wig off and throw it at the preacher, yeah. take your wig off and throw it at the preacher. If God tells you to kick that chair over, kick that chair over. If God says sing to me a new song and you can't sing, sing to the Lord a new song. Whatever God asks you to do for your deliverance, do it exactly like God told you to do it. And then watch God. Come on. Get you out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Then you can be like Naaman. You can go back and say, There is a God. There is a God. For God has saved me. Amen. God is good and He's worthy to be praised. So God so loved the world that He gave His one begotten Son, the word believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Even that is unorthodox. People didn't see salvation coming through Jesus. And because they couldn't see salvation coming through Jesus, they didn't get saved. But he is the Lamb of God. He is the bright and morning star. He is the door for us to get into glory. Amen. Amen. Malachi 3 8. Since I saw you reaching for your money, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, but you say, wherever you have robbed me in tithes and offerings, you are cursed with a curse, we have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there might be meat in my house. So true me, here we said, the Lord of hosts, if I not open you the windows of heaven, and throw you out a blessing that shall not be room enough to receive it. Even that 
is unorthodox. You're asking me to give to get my way out of debt. What? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Give to get yourself out of debt. For God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. 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 I want to reiterate God bless you cousin be safe I want to reiterate because we we bring our money in a personal way to you and the Lord that you pray over what you give God that you ask God to accept what you offering until Thank you, brother. Um, that's your assignment to pray over your own giving. Mm -hmm. um, it's good to send your child down with your money, but it's better for you to bring your money yourself. Yeah. I'm just teaching. You can receive it or not receive it. You can take it or not take it. You can say it sounds good. It's a good doctrine, Jerry, but I ain't going to do it. And you can go on and, and take it. The portion that you give when you can have God give you in abundance. Where it's an overflow. Amen. Amen. And I like I like the overflow better than the underflow. Amen. I like my currents running over. Amen. Not I don't want to step in mud. I want to step in water. Well. Amen. So pray over. Pray over what you bring to the Lord. So on the morrow being that I turned 28 all over again. Um, Thanking the Lord for allowing me to see, to make it to another birthday. Um, I, I tell you that God has been good to this fellow standing right here. I, I, I've had some, some good days and some bad days, but all I can say is God has been good to me. God's been good to me, and I'm grateful and thankful for everything um, that the Lord has done for me. Um, he just has a way of reminding us of his goodness. Amen. Amen. And I count it all joy that God has uh, shown me favor. Amen. Amen. Still got him at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Bridget, what's up? You're getting so big. 
Oh, you big girl, look at you. You six. What? Get to the tone. I'm going to turn it off. Okay. Oh, okay. You're out here. You can hear us all day. I can't. 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 Man, I, I see, man. I'm like, I couldn't do that. Oh, yeah, man. Crazy, bro. What's up? I'm so. You and June the same age for a couple days. Yeah. Three days. Uh, Mother, are you wrong with me? Uh oh. <laughs> We're going to have to put that car in the shop. We're going to put a new battery, a new alternator, and it still won't start. So. Wait a minute. Hold on. I Is it a new alternator? Because I got yeah. a two-seater. Wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, well, we're going to have to go and get that there. No. Yo. Yeah. Uh, I ain't seen a new whip yet, so. <laughs> what did you think? I'll do it. Uh -huh. I'm just start stuff that's gonna come up here. 